To say that I enjoyed Ben Shipper's graphic novel, Joe Death and the Graven Image, would be a gross understatement. Picking up that book for the first time sent me right back to my childhood, when I'd pick up a Calvin and Hobbes collection and just sit and read for hours. I was captivated by this tale of a weary skeleton and his moth companion and their encounters with witches, demons, and the divine. Before I began to read this story, I thought I was in for a western that just so happens to have a living skeleton in it. Instead, I found a vast, vibrant, and magical story that just so happens to have western elements in it. In Joe Death and the Graven Image, strange is normal. There's no need for the characters to stop and be surprised when they run into a snappily dressed cat detective. Instead, the story presents an old world with its own primordial history. It's what I would call a lived-in world. The question is, how do you take so many abstract and arcane elements and make them seem normal or logical? Well, with every good story, there must be a storyteller behind it. Benjamin Shipper is an artist and writer from Greenville, South Carolina. To quote from his About section on his website, I write primarily from my own experiences and filter them through genres such as fantasy and science fiction. Growing up, he learned at the feet of a man that many take inspiration from to this day. Bob Ross didn't just create behind closed doors like the great and powerful Oz. Instead, he showed people how he did what he did as a means of empowering his viewers. Armed with books of art from movies like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, he began to see a connection between art and story. Shipper's distinct style is influenced by many things. From Mike Mignola, illustrator for such titles as Hellboy, we get darkness. Darkness can add clear divisions, create mood, and give mystery to a horrific monster lurking in the shadows. From Alex Toth, we see a refreshing simplicity. Sometimes, less is more. Illustrative detail though a useful tool in itself, can be set aside to give way to a more stylized approach. Shipper's style brings clarity to a panel that might otherwise have devolved into chaos. From Christoph Blaine, we get a heavy dose of cartoonism. Sometimes I feel that despite the medium being the delivery system of some of the most well-loved stories, people can still look down their noses at the idea of cartoons and a cartoon style of character. With cartoonism, you can push characters into new forms and shed the tedium of hyper-realistic, anatomically correct designs. What I was struck with was how much expression Shipper is able to convey with his characters in spite of their more cartoonish nature. Lastly, from Miyazaki, we get Shipper's love of detail, characters, and world building. As of recording this video, I've read through Joe Death multiple times, and each time I do, I notice something different. Small details in the background that escaped me the last time I read through. Each character feels unique, from their outlook, their desires, and the way they speak. By the end of the story, I was left wanting more. I wanted to know everything about these characters and the world they inhabit. Shipper has been inspired by a tapestry of creative people whose influences can be clearly seen through the unfolding of Joe Death and the Graven Image. Young cartoonists or young artists of any kind think that they um, need to make something that's wholly original they don't realize that the wholly original part comes after 
uh, ingesting the, the best art that they that they like and then it it just it marries inside them and it's like a it's like a pot that kind of stews and what comes out of you is um, is a mix of all those things. Evil exists in big places as well as small places. It is this darkness in all its forms that Joe and Blue must grapple with. When I started the story, I never could have guessed that I was in for allegory. In a video posted to Benjamin Shipper's YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you go check out, he divulged that he was raised in a Christian household. He mentioned this whilst reviewing a dramatized comic loosely based on the story of John the Baptist and Salome from the Bible. Even the title of the graphic novel seems to be riffing on Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, which the King James Version translates as, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. I won't be going into what the graven image is in the story itself to avoid spoilers. Trust me you're going to want to find that out by reading it yourself. The reveal is just too good. In the creation account found in the book of Genesis, mankind is the pinnacle of creation. Power, dominion, and responsibility is given to mankind over the rest of the created creatures. A couple times in this story, Blue hears his fellow bugs talking about how if they side with demonic power, they could rise in their station to be like man. They wish for this, not understanding that this wish would entail embracing the corruption, greed, and brokenness of man as well. They would trade their smallness for power under the reign of a demonic overlord. This idea is mirrored in the character of the bridge man, who has metaphorically and physically connected himself to a demonic underling in order to attain power. On one side, it seems like he has control over the brute, and that he can direct him. However, once the bruiser is incapacitated, Joe points out that his connectedness to this powerful man does not inherently make him better. Sacrifice is a recurring theme throughout the story. Trade-offs, to be precise. What are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? Crowds of bugs would sacrifice their innocence for wealth. A witch would sacrifice her morals for beauty. A mysterious stranger would sacrifice her body in exchange for revenge. A captive slave would sacrifice the autonomy of an innocent child to gain time. Joe would sacrifice his life in defense of others. Before I can nail down what genre Ben Shipper is writing in, we must begin with the description of a genre called the Weird West. The Western is probably the most American of film and TV genres, one that conjures images of desolate landscapes, stoic, silent heroes, and a sense of righteous valor. It is, generally speaking, a straight-laced, realistic genre one that's rooted in America's building of its own identity, the idea of expansion, and the mythology of its early heroes and villains. But now imagine if you pop in some dinosaurs, a vampire or two, occasional cannibals, acts with the devil, and maybe even some alien action. Elements of sci-fi, horror, and the fantastical are cross-pollinated with the earthbound dustiness of the cowboy movie. I feel that labeling this story as a weird western is reductive. This is because this version of the west seemingly has no ties to America, let alone planet Earth. The world of Joe Def has its own hierarchy of good and evil. It has its own deities. Joe Def and the Graven Image is a genre I would call the Divine West. It retains the often stoic, righteous hero. However, this world seems to be teeming with magic, the demonic, and the intervention of divine beings of different kinds, and yet, 
None of these things are considered oddities. That's simply how Shipper's world operates. The focus is less on Joe's ability to quick draw, but rather Joe finding purpose and forgiveness. It's less about being the best. It's more about being found worthy in spite of your faults. I see so much value in this story. Since I'm avoiding spoilers, I'm not going nearly as in-depth as I'd like to for this first video essay. In truth, this is less of an essay and more me gushing about something cool I found. And I'm okay with that. Shipper's visual style, which I can only describe as fantastic, yet poised, is also an excellent way of describing how he's written the dialogue. This is the character's world, and we are observers. This makes references to the unfamiliar intriguing and serve to make the world feel truly expansive. My favorite line that is repeated multiple times in the story is, you fear the chasm because you forget the bridge. This is an amazing line, not just in context for Joe and the challenges he must overcome, but also it's just a beautiful line. When we're faced with darkness that's in our face, we can forget the light that lay within arm's reach at all times. Truths that are ever present, even if they are easy to miss. I try not to add many calls to action in my videos. However, if you're watching this and you haven't bought a copy of Joe Death and the Graven Image yet, I implore you to do so. The art is so distinct and the story so captivating that I think you'll have a hard time putting it down. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you later.